Hi, I'm Amy and this is your sewing room solution. I love machine embroidery and if you haven't tried it, please stop in and see us and we'd love to show you how amazing these new machines are. You push a button and you get incredible, beautiful embroidered on anything, towels, tote bags, you name it. If your husband lays down, even his undies will have embroidery on them. So you never know. It's endless what you can embroider on. But the big thing is, it's not what to embroider or what design to use, is what kind of stabilizer do I use? Good stabilizer gives you great results when it comes to your embroidery designs. I'm going to show you some samples and just some of the few uh, different types of stabilizers that are out there that you can use for different types of embroidery um, projects. One of the first things and the easiest things to embroider on is just pure simple cotton. This is just a cotton pillowcase with just a little row of dainty embroideries along the band. Now what makes this very crisp and clean, one of the problems we have with machine embroidery is puckering and buckling and just not very fresh looking. Everything looks kind of jumbled. What the first thing that I did on this band is I actually interfaced it. And you're thinking, well, interfacing, that's going to make it crunchy. My favorite interfacing to use is this French Fuse or Fusey Knit. It's a nylon trico and it's fusible and it only stretches one direction. So when I fuse this on the inside underneath my embroidery edge, I fused it so the stretch uh, was going the length of it, um, just the way it happened to be on the bolt. I knew the cotton wasn't going to stretch, but it adds no weight or any bulk, so it just is perfect. So it added just enough so when the embroidery was doing all the zigzag left or right, it wasn't going to be pulling it up. But that wasn't enough. I had to use a little extra. So I just used a basic tearaway uh, stabilizer and this is a different type of tearaway, but just a simple tearaway underneath in my hoop was all it took to cr just make this a very um, clean and crisp type of embroidery. It doesn't get any simpler than working with cotton. And if you're new to embroidery, that's the best way to get started. Let's see, you're gonna take me a second to dig through all my things. Look, you're gonna love this. Look how cute this is. It's a little gift bag in the face of a snowman. And again, it's just regular quilt cotton. Let me turn it inside out. And the only thing I used on the inside of this was just a little bit of tear away in my hoop. Some things don't require a lot of stabilizer. First of all, the embroidery designs are not very dense. It's not a lot of embroidery and it's a lot of not a lot of embroidery on top of each other going a lot of directions. So that was my first um, inkling that I could just use a simple tear away. Okay, I'm just gonna throw them on the floor. <laughs> And we have another piece of cotton here. The other thing, when I'm doing embroidery on cotton, this is going to go, well, was going to go into a table runner for my patio. This is something that I love to add and it's kind of new. It's called Thermore Cotton Batting. And when you think batting, I know you think quilting, but this makes great for table runners behind sweatshirts. It's perfect for cotton because it gives, you see how the lettering has a little bit of poof to it? Something we wouldn't get if we just used a flat tearaway stabilizer. So this is perfect. A little bit of this, just one layer behind in my hoop is all the stabilizer I need to get this nice fluffy looking embroidery. So when I put these together, I'm still gonna add um, a backing and still do a little bit of quilting, but it's all I needed. So it gives me a little option when I want a little bit of lift in my embroideries. Okay, now this is cotton quilting. It's a pretty little table runner for my dining room. You can see the back just like that. Now, I didn't use any stabilizer. There's time you don't have to use stabilizer because inside here I have a thin cotton batting. So the batting acts as my stabilizer. So I have my backing, my batting in between, and then the top of my table runner. So I hooped all three layers at one time and used the embroidery design as my finished quilting. So I didn't need any stabilizer. All I had to do when I was done was just do the binding and I was finished. So there's certain times you don't need any stabilizer. The batting acts as your stabilizer, so it works out just great. Okay, this guy right here, my little binky bag, 
yes, there's binkies inside. <laughs> when I make a little project like this, whether it's a little bag or something, I, again, this little piece right here, I didn't use any stabilizer because I took the time to interface, just a light whisper weft interfacing in my lime green. So when I did my um, embroidery on my lime green, then I was okay. I didn't have to add an extra stabilizer because the interfacing stabilized it. Basically, they're kind of, they're not interchangeable because if you were making a garment, you wouldn't dare use stabilizer through in a collar instead of interfacing. But a little bit of interfacing instead of stabilizer gives things a nice, crisp look, especially when you're making something utilitarian uh, like a little tote bag. Towels. Boy, I get more phone calls on towels than you can imagine. This is what we call a red work design, just a simple trace like penny squares that they did in the, in the 20s and 30s. Again, didn't use any stabilizer. There was absolutely no need to. This towel is just a, a bar towel. And it's so thin, there is nothing to it. I know the stitches were gonna be thick enough, they were gonna hang right in there. So this was just one time on a towel, I'm gonna let you get away without using any kind of stabilizer because the design allowed me to. Now this particular towel, this is something called towel embossing, where the background is totally mushed down and then the relief pops through to see the monogram. Now when I, when I do towels, I don't do any stabilizer in the back. You know why? Because if I would use a tearaway or something in the back, when you give it as a gift, it's all oogie on the back and nobody likes that. And who hangs the towel up right after the first time you hang it out? Nobody picks it up and nobody folds it pretty and nobody hangs it over the towel bar. Maybe once and that's about it. So the topping that I used is a wash away. Now this wash away um, is a total, it looks like plastic. It's a seaweed byproduct. And I have here a can of water. Now, I can't stand to do this, but I have to confess. You just rinse out your towel. Now this goes on the top of your towel. If it makes you feel better, you can put it underneath. It washes totally away. Now, I will tell you, I'm not a fan of the texture when I do this. So usually I do this in the washing machine. So I just put it in the warm water and you kind of rinse it. And uh, it gets this texture. <laughs> So trust me, after you rinse it off a few times, it goes totally away and your towel is perfectly beautiful. So then when you give it as a gift, it's totally washed off and everything is perfectly fine. So that's how I like to do my towels. Now, I will tell you there's another product and it's called Heat Away. It says right on the manufacturer instructions not to use on towels. However, <laughs> I'm a little bit of a rebel and I do use it on towels. And I think they don't want you to use it on the towels because it doesn't come totally out of the nap and it leaves, leaves kind of a, a hardness or a crunchiness. But most cases I can get it all the way out of my towel. There's another way to use this too. I'm gonna pull my iron over here and just excuse the little dirty uh, board. Now you're, you're gonna die when I do this. Let's activate the iron. It's one of those auto shut off ones. When I take this and stick it to the iron, you instantly like have a heart attack because you would be yelling at everybody in the house for doing that. So once it sticks to the iron, you're just gonna take it to your ironing board and just rub it around. And what happens is it turns to those little kind of uh, plastic pellets and just brushes away. How cool is that? So, an hour before the bridal shower, when you're on your way out the door and you just finished your towel, you don't have to wash it. You can just uh, press it and off it goes. So that's another cool way is a heat away stabilizer when you have to get things done right away and you don't have time to wash them. Another reason for wash away stabilizer is when you're making lace. Now lace, these beautiful three dimension ornaments. Now these are from um, Dakota. Dakota designs, which I really like their stuff. You make three sides in the hoop and then they just kind of self button together. You can see there's some lace openings in there. If I used any kind of stabilizer that was paper or whatever, I, they wouldn't be pretty. So this is the time when you pull out the wash away stabilizer. Now this is a different type of wash away. We went through dissolve away that was like a film. We went through the heat away, which you could never get your iron and all them little holes, so that wouldn't work. This is called a fibrous wash away or a paper wash away. And it's really, really tough. 
and sturdy. I love this stuff for making lace because it really can hold up to the density of the designs. And it's the same thing. When I rinse it in a little bit of warm water, poof, it's gone and it's no big deal. And then you have a gorgeous freestanding project when it's done. You can see that here. These are lace bookmarks. How cute is this? When you give it with a gift card to your favorite bookstore, you just have to love that. And then how about some lace, maybe on the top of a ready-made t-shirt? It's the same thing. There's a little bit of organza inside of here. Um, but again, that fibrous wash away holds up with those heavy stitching. So if your lace design is heavy and dense, the fibrous is the way to go. If it's thin and wimpy, it's okay for the film if you're putting it on the top of a towel or something that doesn't have a lot of body to it. So that guy, get those out of the way. Now, the fibrous wash away, this little sign here that said baby sleeping, this was actually done as an applique, which means we hooped the fibrous uh, wash away in our hoop. We laid down the first layer of our fabric, and after it did the first outline, we trimmed away. So it did the satin stitching. And then the only thing we had to do is go along with a damp finger, okay, a wet finger, and it just melted. Uh, just rinse the stabilizer away just with our our finger and we had this nice hard finished crust so there wasn't any pokies around our satin stitching another reason for that beautiful fibrous uh, solve uh, wash away okay fleece fleece the whole world loves fleece now when you are doing embroidery with fleece is a couple things first it's stretchy which means Clue number one, the stabilizer has to be attached to the fabric, whether you use an iron-on stabilizer, which is what this is. This is an iron-on tearaway. It has a waxy side that presses onto the project and then just a tearaway side. But I don't know if I want to tear away something that's on fleece. First of all, this is white and this is black. And the other thing about fleece, whether it's sweatshirt, um, whether it's t-shirt, anything that has a nap or a sponge to it has to have a topper. And that's what's nice about this heat away or the wash away. You always have to put this on the top of your project. This keeps the stitches from sinking down into no man's land on anything that has sponginess to it. So you know right up front always you're going to have a topper on the top and something on the back. If it's a jacket, nobody's going to see it. By all means, use a little bit of the iron-on stabilizer on the back or just a little bit of the tearaway. You can use a little bit of the basting spray. And what I mean by basting spray, it's a temporary spray adhesive. It's like a wicked hairspray. And be weary because it'll eat your acrylic nails <laughs> like no, but nothing you've ever seen. So a little bit means a pss, pss. Stick it on your stabilizer, spray on your stabilizer, stick it to your garment, and that's enough. A lot of times I'll use a layer of the um, wash away, a fibrous wash away on the back with a little bit of basting spray to keep it from stretching. Anything that stretches, you have to secure it with a stabilizer. So let me show you. See how stretchy that is, right? I'm going to take the iron on side and I'm going to take the iron and I'm just going to just quickly, it's a temporary iron, it pulls right off. And now what happens? I can't move my knit. So when I go to put it in the hoop, it doesn't stretch as I'm putting it in the hoop. So that would be my back. This would be my front, the fibrous wash away. So that would ensure me I would have no sunken stitches on the top and no stretchy outies on the back. Fleece requires two types of stabilizer. Now, onesies, baby onesies. Oh my goodness. It never fails. The first person who takes home a brand new embroidery machine wants to do a baby onesie. It's the hardest thing to embroider on this earth. The thinner the knit, the stretchier the knit, the harder it's going to be. Now the theory is the thinner the knit, the more stabilizer it's going to need. Now you can see the octopus. He's an applique, so he's got a little bit of fabric there. And first of all, they're so tiny to hoop. Now, there's not much nap on this, so I'm not so worried about using a topper on the back. But on something like this, that's gonna be next to baby, this could be very, very itchy. So, my hint for this 
is I take a couple layers of this Trico interfacing and I'll iron a layer this way and then I'll iron a layer going the other direction. So the stretch goes one way and then the stretch goes the other way, kind of cancels them out and it's very, very soft for the baby. And then I'll have to worry about using any other kind of stabilizer. So it makes it very easy. If you want to put a layer of wash away on the top and if it makes you feel better, by all means. And a lot of times you have to cut these little things up the side so you can get your hoop in there. That's a whole nother lesson. But with babies, always, even if I just use a regular tearaway, I always cut a piece of this out and cover up that itchy embroidery. It makes them feel a whole lot better. Now, tote bags, big plastic vinyl tote bags, things that are so hard to hoop, things that are hard to use, they don't really require any kind of stabilizer. But what they require is something to hold them in the hoop. One of the things is one thing we call sticky paper. There's kind of a lot of names for it, but it's this gridded paper. Ooh, we'll say in a second, let me get my pen. Let me do it this way. Oh, you dirty guy, here we go, there we go. <laughs> acrylic nails. So I've hooped this sticky paper. I'm going to take a pin and it's covered up by this uh, covering paper here and I'm just going to score it like this and I'm going to try to catch it. Let's see here. There we go. Just enough to get a little section pulled up. So all I've done is just caught the edges and revealed it. And the reason I've done it this way, if I would have pulled all this sticky up and then hooped the sticky, my hoops would have been a mess. This stuff is like, like duct tape. It's not good. So now I've exposed all this sticky. So now all I have to do is slide this inside, press it in place. press it down and now it's ready to slide into my hoop because it's stuck. It's not going to come off. And if your machine has the ability to do a, a square of basting stitches, that's all you have to do. So in this case, I didn't need stabilizer to stabilize the fabric. I need stabilizer to hold it in the doggone hoop so it would actually sew it out. So sometimes stabilizer has more than one use. Now sometimes people complain about the sticky paper gumming up their needle. All I do is keep a cotton ball with a little bit of denatured alcohol right next to my machine. After it stops for color change, I'll just wipe down my needle a little bit. It's that simple. It's no big deal. It's a lot easier than trying to find a different way to kind of hoop this kind of a project. Because once you do one for somebody, I'm sure there's nine more names to follow for somebody else who wants a tote bag just like it. So that's another use for something like sticky paper. Ugh, let's get that out there. Get that off there. Now, sweatshirts. Everybody likes embroidered sweatshirts. The first thing I do is I kind of cut them up the side. I know it's, you know, I know there's no side seam on most sweatshirts, but Lord have mercy, you have a sewing machine. And some of you even have sergers, so it's no big deal. Now, sweatshirts. Stabilizing sweatshirts. Something you have to have is iron on tear away. This is the stuff that has the waxy on one side, the tear away on the other. You open up your sweatshirt, you iron on the tear away, and you have to have it bigger than your hoop. You cannot cheat stabilizer. Do not scrimp. Do not put a piece this big right behind the size of your design when you're using a hoop this big. It doesn't work that way. It has to be big enough so when you snap it in your hoop that the stabilizer fits in your hoop so it doesn't pull away and unstretch what you're trying to stop from stretching. So you're going to use some of this in the back and a layer of the wash away on top. And I used metallic thread um, on the reindeer. And I have, don't have a problem with metallic thread. I'll give you a hint someday about how to handle metallic thread. That's no biggie. And that is super simple. And when I'm all done, I tear away my stabilizer gently from the back. And a little hint about tearing away. I have some already on here. I put my thumb oh, like that on my satin stitching. And I lift up my paper and I pull away. 
don't just stand here and just yank the whole sheet because that satin stitching is delicate and you don't want to pull all that pretty stitching to the back. That's crazy. So just a little bit at a time while you're sitting watching Oprah, you know, you can be pulling this away, doing something <laughs> just like that. Okay, that is just a simple, couple of simple projects. Some you can get started with, with your stabilizers. Stabilizers, you can't have enough. So stop in the store, get a couple yards of everything so you have a nice um, stash of stabilizers. So when you want to do something, you can do it right. Okay, this is your Sewing Room Solution.